at the score line. We always start with posting our mission, um, just as a reminder of what we do and why we do it. To start tonight's, um, to start our, our event tonight, I would like to introduce our building principal, Dr. Renato Lahar, to have a message for everyone. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Lahara, and I'm the very proud principal of Sheltenham High School. I'd like to welcome all of you to our virtual, first ever virtual back to school night. And I know that it's not uh, the, the usual, the in-person, uh, but we want you to know that we want to give you as much information as, as possible. Um, I want you to know that throughout the summer, our administrative staff, uh, the administration, our administrative assistants, we're working tire tirelessly to make sure that we deliver uh, the best online and virtual setting uh, for your young people. We, we also understand that it is tough. We are all going, uh, you know, through this new normal, um, you know, having our, kids, having our kids at home while working at home or some of us not being able to work at home, but we want you to know that we hear you. Uh, we support you and that we, tonight, we hope to uh, deliver the message that we are here to support not only your children, but you, you as well as parents. Um, so without further ado, throughout the presentation, the administrative uh, team, my assistant principals and vice principals will introduce themselves. But before that, we have Ms. Uh, Lori Cohen, who is a, um, our counselor's coordinator, uh, who will start off the meeting with some information. Ms. Cohen. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Um, this is certainly a different type of back to school night, but certainly you're going to be getting some good information. So thank you for joining us. Um, I am one of the six counselors who are in the, in the building. I am the coordinator and I have a um, caseload as well. And I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about some of the different options that are available to you as families and as students. Um, the first thing is Naviance. That is a system that currently 10th, 11th, and 12th graders should be familiar with. Ninth graders will be getting an introduction to it at some point in this fall. It is an online database for college and career information. So there are all kinds of career inventories, some um, interest inventories, skill inventories that can help your kids kind of start focusing on different careers. There are ways to research careers from everything to job outlooks in what areas of the country, to what education is required, to um, salaries projected for in, um, careers. As students get older and start to really focus in on their future plans, and if that includes college, there's a tremendous database of information in Naviance regarding college. They can visit different college websites, they can learn about different programs and majors from the schools, all of that is accessible through Naviance. So I would ask your children to spend a little bit of time showing it to you. And if you need help, certainly reach out to any to your student's counselor and they can help you log on. In addition, we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about some academic supports that are available to you and your, your students. Um, the first thing is all teachers are holding office hours. So if your student is in a class and doesn't understand something or is trying homework and didn't understand how to do a prob problem, the office hours would be a great way for them to do a Google Meet with their teacher to get some additional one-on-one -on -one help, um, one on small group perhaps, depending on how many are in the office hours. But if you th think about it, it's a, it's a great opportunity to have kids connect with their teachers and to get some additional academic supports at the same time. So I would absolutely encourage every student to plan on attending at least one office hour per week with a teacher, if not more, but I think that would be a great way for students to get some additional help. Um, no, you do not request office hours in advance. Teachers should be, have provided you the online code that they will be having and your student would just enter the code, jump on the, the Google Meet and they will see the teacher there. So that's, that's a really easy way to do that. Um, also, we do have something called the National Honor Society. National Honor Society is 
um, a group of students who have applied and been accepted based on their grades, their activities, their community service, their character. And part of the responsibility of being in the National Honor Society is tutoring. And so there are tutors available to students. There is a form for students to fill out. I don't know that it's quite up and running yet, but it should be by the end of September. Um, I'm hoping that is available on the website under academics. There's a link that says National Honor Society. You would click on there and request a tutor. So that's another way for students to get help. And the tutors are students who have had success in those classes in previous years. So I would encourage your students to utilize a tutor if they're struggling with a subject as well. And then next slide, Dr. Hammond. Um, can someone move me to the next slide? Thank you. Um, wanted to talk about how your students can get hold of, of their counselor. It, when we're in school, they, one of the main ways kids find us is that they come into our office. So here is basically our counseling office. Oh, go back one more for me. They're going to every day in Canvas, there's going to be a, here we go, counseling, thank you. So every day in Canvas, there's going to be a link that says counseling um, contact. Next slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. Counseling request form, it's called. Students will click on that form and they will fill out some real basic information, their name, their grade, who their counselor is, and it breaks it down for them on the form and then a brief description of what they want to talk to their counselor about. Uh, at that point, counselor gets notification. We will reach out to your student, whether it's through email or Google Meet, and we will work with them. So I would love to, and I will speak for all of my, the counselors, I would love for us to get to know you guys. So please fill out a form and just say, I want to speak to Ms. Cohen just, to get to, just so she can get to know me if I'm your counselor. So I'm encouraging students to, again, sometime in the next month, reach out to your counselor and just schedule a time to say hi and talk about your future, talk about your classes, talk about anything that they wanna talk about. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is what it will look like. Counselor form will be on Canvas. Um, here's the basic information I was talking about that you would be filling in. Here's the breakdown of who your counselor is, just so you know to read this. Um, here's the ninth grade administrator who's in charge of each grade. And nope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Doc, can you go to that screen? <laughs> There it is. Um, and here is the breakdown of the alphabet of who the counselor is assigned to. Our email addresses are on here. Um, we also have a mental health and wellness counselor, Mr. Turan. Um, if, you or your if you feel your student is struggling or your student is struggling with any number of reasons that you're worried about, whether it's they're anxious about being online, they're, they're just feeling down, they've had a relationship that recently ended and they're sad, Mr. Turan is another really good resource. So I would also encourage, in addition to meeting with your counselor once this month, if you're worried about your child or your child feels that they need some more support, I would encourage them to also reach out to Mr. Turan and meet him because he's a great guy who, who would certainly love to help your student. And I think that's it for me. So who's next? Mr. Blackwell. All right, Mr. Blackwell. Thank you much. Good evening, families and students. Welcome to Back to School Night. Uh, my name is Mr. Blackwell, and I'm the Director of Athletics and Activities here at Cheltenham School District. Um, I have received some emails from uh, parents as well as students in regards to um, activities. Yes, although we are uh, not in our normal setting, we will be um, having um, offer 
activities on a virtual platform. We're in the process of uh, approving um, virtual plans from our sponsors um, as we receive them, Dr. Lahara and I. Um, right now, uh, we have about almost 40 clubs that have submitted forms um, and that will be approved. So once uh, we get that list updated, you will know and you will be able to, uh, students will be able to pick and choose a club to your liking. Um, I have tabs on here where um, it, it will show you uh, where to go um, if you are searching or have any inquiries online. As far as athletics, uh, most of you know, our fall uh, season was suspended uh, recently. Um, our superintendent, um, Dr. Marseille, um, had reactivated us to um, continue with our fall sports only uh, voluntary workouts. They will be, will be beginning soon. Um, the page that you see right now that's up, uh, that's actually our activities page. It's very user friendly. We just update it. Um, so students, family, please go on that page and check it out. Um, as far as with our sports, we will be continuing soon with our voluntary um, fall sport only workouts. Um, as we move forward throughout the year, uh, we will uh, be in discussion uh, about winter sports as well as spring sports. Um, but you can go and visit our athletics page and it will give you all the information that is needed um, as, as far as it talks about eligibility, physical forms, anything that you could think of, you can find it um, on that. Uh, my information and my assistant's information, Ms. Kimley Soninko, is also found on those pages as well. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening. Good evening. My name is Mr. Craig Metcalf, and I'm the ninth grade vice principal. Um, you can see my information there. If you need to contact me, it's cmetcalf at sheltonham.org. Um, additionally, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, my uh, administrative assistant is Ms. Nakia Presley, and her email address is npresley at sheltonham.org. Um, tonight, I'm just going to cover attendance and briefly talk about PBIS. All right, so. Um, if you're a ninth, a ninth grade parent, you had the uh, opportunity to kind of see what our process would be like with regards to taking attendance. So I'm just going to review that again for some of our parents that weren't able to join, as well as for um, some of our other parents of uh, older scholars that we have in our school. Um, so obviously for daily school attendance, we have a Google form that's sent to students in their Canvas every morning. So we kind of switched that up and we sent messages to students and families. Um, there is now a homeroom page that is up and running. And so every morning, our scholars will go to that homeroom page. And from there, they'll be able to click on daily attendance. And then they'll be able to select um, their grade level. And then that will then, you know, trigger them to a page in which they have to input their ID number uh, and uh, their name in order to complete their daily attendance. Next slide, please. So this is what it looks like. So when they go on, they'll see this homeroom uh, attendance and canvas page. The next slide, as you can see up there at the top, it says daily attendance. Go back one, one more forward, please. One more. As you can see there, this is the page in which uh, you saw previously, but this is like our home page of where you can access um, certain things from our school, right? So clearly up there, you see daily attendance, you see announcements, you see counseling. Um, that's where that counseling form was. Uh, we soon will have events up there as well as school psychologist information. Um, the daily attendance link is live. It's not live and embedded in this presentation, but if you're able to go into Canvas, you'll see that that's live. As well as the announcements, that's live right now and so is the counseling link.
Once they click on daily attendance, this page will come up. And so what we wanted to do is give you guys a snapshot of what it would look like for a scholar going through, you know, daily attendance. So you have the homeroom page, then you have that page we just saw, and next you'll have this page right here. So all they'll do is simply click on whatever their grade level is. So their grade level that's in power school, right? So we have some scholars, maybe they've excelled and are in 12th grade and, and maybe on, in power school they're in 11th grade, um, you know, and vice versa, they would then select whatever's in power school. So if power school says they're currently in ninth grade or 10th grade, that is the grade level that they will choose. Once they're in, they'll plug in their information. Um, next slide, please, so we can show them what that page looks like. And so this was a ninth grade um, attendance page. Again, you have to put in your student ID number, right? And if you don't put in your student ID number, it will not register you um, for attendance for that day. So they must put in their, their student ID number, their first name, their last name, and then it asks a question with regards to if they've completed work today. Once they click submit, that goes into a Google form, which we read every single day. In addition to that, as I said, there's another way we take attendance just to verify. We are also looking at number of classes that scholars are attending. So we, um, we cross-reference this data with data from uh, PowerSchool to see which classes scholars are attending. And from there, um, we kind of marry the two to determine who's um, been in school and who hasn't been in school. All right. Now, I want to be sure that we are clear. If, you know, if there is some discrepancy with attendance or if you're going to be out, we do not want our scholars emailing chsattendance at shawinham.org. Parents, it must be the parents that are emailing Ms. Jarvis at chsattendance at shawinham.org. Only use this email address. Some of you may know Ms. Jarvis because she is a community member, um, but please do not send it to P. Jarvis. She's not going to be checking that email when it comes to attendance issues. Um, and trust me, she will get a lot of attendance uh, issues and concerns. So please make sure you're only emailing CHS attendance at shuthim.org. And we do not want, we're not going to honor scholars saying, oh, I have a doctor's appointment. It must come from a parent. Um, in addition to that, when you do email uh, Ms. Jarvis at CHS attendance at shuthim.org, please make sure your scholar's name, grade, reason for absence are all included, and it must be submitted within three days of the absence from school in order for it to be accepted. Additionally, all absences will go in as unexcused until a note is received, um, and parents, you're only permitted 10 days of parent notes for absences or late arrival or early dismissal. Um, after 10 days, a doctor's note is required in order to excuse the absence. Um, again, just to give you guys a heads up with regards to truancy, um, you know, it is gonna be difficult. Uh, we are working some things out. We finally came to a conclusion of how to best do our attendance. Um, that was kind of solved the other day. Um, but in regards to truancy, after three days of unexcused absences, you, a warning letter is sent home to families. After six days of unexcused absences, um, scholars considered habitually truant. Our school social worker will follow up with a meeting of potential court proceedings um, based on the outcomes of that meeting. Um, so please make sure you, know, you check out the CHS student handbook with regards to truancy and truancy laws. The laws have changed. The age for truancy is now 18 years of age. And additional uh, things just to remember, uh, parents and families, um, scholars must attend class daily. Uh, teachers are taking class attendance daily in power school. Non-completion of daily class assignments. Just to talk about this briefly, teachers can submit an absence and reduce credit in accordance with the student late work policy. So we do have a late work policy. Um, if you're missing class, that can also lead to truancy. So that's why we're saying it's important that you, you know, our scholars are attending class. Um, and then the Pennsylvania Department of Education state school attendance is a combination of both attending class and completing school assignments. Um, and I say that because we do understand that there are going to be some instances where um, you know, screen fatigue sets in or other things come up where, you know, just like in a regular class, a scholar might not be able to be in class for some reason, um, as long as you're able to submit that work in a timely manner and you communicate, which I think is the key, um, then that uh, credit will be honored uh, at full percent, full hundred percent, excuse me. Um, again, for the daily class assignment, which is students um, submitting the Google form, uh, it's due by 1159 every, every day. Um, on a day that it was signed, I'm sorry, class assignments. Um, homework extended assignments are due when a teacher designates the due date. 
Teachers will post the class nickname in Canvas every day on the announcement page of their class as well as in their class itself. So if, you, if you're a scholar would are going Canvas, they would see that nickname of the class is posted um, and it's there in one section. Um, so kids can always go to it to check to see if it's changed or anything. Um, most of the classes don't change um, unless some issue arises. So just to give an example, uh, biology period five, the nickname might be Metcalf nine. Um, and when scholars go on Google Meets through their classrooms, um, through their Shelton High School email accounts, they'll enter the classroom nickname to join the Google Class Meet. In addition, um, just to give you guys some more information, so the two people uh, that we do have involved, the two administrative assistants that are involved in, in handling attendance are Ms. Jarvis and Ms. Smith. Um, so again, they're their email addresses. Uh, Ms. Jarvis, again, for all attendance issues, chsattendance at sheltonham.org. And then Ms. Smith, she will be handling our Eastern Center attendance uh, and student obligations. In regards to PBIS, so first thing I want to say is we are developing a student team and we are looking for family and community members to actually be a part of our team. Uh, it's important for us to be inclusive and to kind of grow our family. Um, with PBIS, but this is what we are actually um, distributing. We're actually, we just recently sent this out for feedback um, to our scholars, um, just to, if we need any changes, we wanna make sure we're inclusive of our scholars, but also our families. And so we are looking to expand on our team. So the acronym that we have for our PBIS is PRIDE, and that stands for Perseverance, Respect, Integrity, Dependability, and Empathy. And so this one, which is our distance learning, PBIS matrix will be different um, than the matrix you will see when we have live instruction face to face. Welcome back families. We are so happy for the start of the school year. My name is Lori Felgois. I am currently the vice principal assigned to the 10th grade, the class of 2023. Each administrator is assigned a grade. Mr. Metcalf works with our ninth graders, so he remains with our ninth graders each year to help them with the transition from the middle school to the high school. The remaining three administrators each have a grade that we follow um, until the students graduate. Uh, so I will be working with the 10th graders and assisting them this year and until they graduate. If your student needs anything this year, please encourage them to reach out to me for any assistance. I will be monitoring grades, attendance, um, and sitting in on classes throughout the year. Uh, so I'm there to help them and also here to answer any questions that you might have um, this year. In addition to working with the class of 2023, I also supervise the English department, the art department, and work directly with the Eastern Center for Arts and Technology. I also manage the power school and grading and oversee the testing, which includes the PSAT, the Keystones and advanced placement tests. I want to say a big thank you to our counseling department this year. They have worked hard so that we can offer an SAT during the weekday, which is actually going to be next Wednesday for our seniors. Seniors have already registered for the test and have the opportunity to take the SAT to obtain scores to send to their colleges. For our juniors, we are offering a Wednesday PSAT and that's going to be held on October 14th. We will continue to send out communication to our juniors and to their families. The communication will include a Google form uh, that you can register for the test Students have until October 2nd to sign up. The PSAT is free, no cost to our junior students. It's a great opportunity to practice for the SAT. It is also the qualifying test for the National Merit Scholarships for our juniors who earn a high score. So if your student has not already signed up for the test and they are a junior, please encourage them to do so. In May, we will be administering advanced placement tests and also the Keystone exams. The Keystone exams are the Pennsylvania standardized tests. These tests are the end of the course 
tests for Algebra 1, Literature, and Biology. I wish everybody a great school year. We are here and ready to help you throughout the year. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We hope you have a great evening. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christine Zubeiro. It's great to have everybody joining us. I am the administrator for the current 11th grade. Um, the administrative assistant in my office is Ms. Devanya Christie. Please feel free to reach out to me or to Ms. Christie with any questions that you have concerning this all important junior year. I am gonna spend a few seconds talking about two things with respect to my, my role here at uh, Cheltenham High School. One of the things that I work on uh, all year long is our Panther Academy. Panther Academy is mostly starting with our summer school. Um, we run a virtual course by course program during the summer and some of our students are taking courses during the summer or the school year um, for credit recovery to try to recover some of the credits that they may have lost in previous years um, through failure um, or they may be advancing taking a course a math course a health course a phys ed course to kind of advance during the year so that's summertime we also offer uh, those courses during the year um, and so you can always reach out to me if you have any questions concerning the Panther Academy. My other role at CHS is to ensure uh, that all of our safety drills and safety information is up to date and appropriate for uh, the high school. And so I am the person who puts out the calendar for fire drills um, and things of that nature. Um, so if you or your scholar have any feedback concerning those drills, you are free to send me an email. I'd also like to talk briefly about Safe to Say. Um, Safe to Say is a Pennsylvania um, program run out of the Attorney General's office. Uh, Dr. Hammond, if you could advance the slide. Um, it is an anonymous tip line. It's a tip line um, that was born out of the idea that we wanted to keep kids safe from violence. However, it's also a safety tip line if a student or a, f a family member has information about a, a child doing something that's unsafe. Uh, if they're going to harm themselves or harm ever others, it's an anonymous tip line. There are multiple ways that uh, students or families can access the tip line from Safe to Say through an app. There's an app called Safe to Say Something. There is a website, it's right there, uh, safe to say pa.org. And there's a hotline. So if you like to use phones for the anonymous tip line, you can do that too. You have to associate yourselves with a school. So if you make a call, you say, I'm from Cheltenham High School and I have a concern about, and then you share your concern and it's anonymous. They don't take any names. What happens is that tip then comes back to the school team and the school team works to ensure that the correct people are, are on the case and really taking care to make sure our, our scholars are safe. Um, it can be used for mental health and wellness, self-harm or harm of others. Um, it can be used for mental and physical abuse. Any of those cases where you think somebody is, a, is um, in an unsafe situation, that's what safe to say is for. And that is an initiative through the Attorney General's Office of the State of Pennsylvania. There will be more information for our scholars to see as Safe to Say Week, I believe, is next week. So we will be pushing out some information via Canvas just concerning that so your, your scholars will be seeing some of that. But we wanted to make you aware of that important program. I'm excited to work with the juniors and I will follow them through to graduation next year. This is a very important year. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I've also been sending some emails and if you have not been receiving them, let me know, let me know. So great to work with you and good luck for the rest of the year. Good evening, everyone. Um, I actually have to have my camera off. I apologize. I'm working on saving the bandwidth so that we can get through this presentation. Um, I am Dr. Hammond. I am the 12th grade administrator. Um, 
I have to say that uh, this means a lot to me because I have watched my scholars grow from ninth graders all the way to this 12th grade year. I've been their administrator following them through. And so there will be some uh, tissues on hand uh, at, at graduation at the end of this year because to watch, to watch them grow up and then to see them take that diploma is going to be a, a memorable moment for me that I probably will not forget in my career because this is the first class as my time as an administrator that I've got to watch grow from a ninth grade to a 12th grade in that administrative level. Every other year before this, students have seen me either as an administrator and also as a math teacher or a computer teacher in the building. So this, this year means a little bit more to me than any other. So I look forward to this, to this year and, and, and what we have to come. Um, I'm gonna talk to you tonight about a few things. Um, we're just gonna review the online schedule, the online learning schedule. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk about parent access to PowerSchool and Canvas. I'm gonna show again, Mr. Metcalf mentioned it briefly, but I'm just gonna talk again about how students will gain access to their classes. And then I'm just gonna do a brief little overview on if you have questions about your Chromebook. So our online schedule, um, the easiest I can just break it down for everybody is that Cheltenham High School operates on a blue and gold schedule. So we have classes that run on blue days, we have classes that run on gold days, and then we have our majors that run on blue and gold days. And so while we are in this distance learning platform, Monday and Tuesday are blue days, Thursday and Friday are your gold days. We did make a slight change from what we showed you earlier in the year, um, we, where we have our morning classes now operating in the morning over those two days. And so you'll see periods one, two, three, and four, five are all in the morning and end by 11.10. And then you have your afternoon classes all taking place in the afternoon. This allows us to have a schedule that as close as possible can mirror the timing for those classes um, for when we are back in the school day. So when we're, in the, when we're back in person instruction, you know, you wanna have your morning classes in the morning and you still wanna have your afternoon classes in the afternoon. And so this schedule also allows us to have that transition back to not really impact um, as much when students are in dual enrollment classes. You know, we have a lot of opportunities for our scholars. And so this is how our schedule operate. And, and one question that always keeps coming up is um, the Wednesday's asynchronous work. And while, as Mr. Metcalf said, our scholars do need to log in and do their daily attendance on Wednesdays, they also have opportunities to reach out to their teachers and have some support time on those Wednesdays. And, um, and then teachers are sending out additional work on those days for your scholars to go and check and complete. Very important, PowerSchool access and Canvas access for parents. I understand we are at the time where we wanna start giving some freedoms to our, our children and letting them be more independent. However, as I say with some teachers, they're still children and we still need to be there and help them and support them and, and keep that close eye on them. So even if we are giving them that freedom, we should still have that access to check power school. You know, even if you're using it as a, hey, do you have homework and they say no, but you know they actually have homework, you can keep asking some questions without them truly knowing. So we want to make sure that you have access so that you can be there and help your child at all times. So when you do get this presentation that will be made available to you and you click on that PowerSchool link, that PowerSchool link will teach you how to gain access as a parent. Um, you may need to send an email to, your, to, my, to whoever your grade level administrator is or their administrative assistant 
because you're going to need um, the ID, the access ID and the access password so that you can link your account to your scholars account. Also, at the very least, please make sure that your demographics and contact information is accurate in PowerSchool. When anything happens or something's going on in the classroom or your scholar may have missed a couple assignments or a teacher wants to tell you something great that your scholar did, they're gonna to go to PowerSchool and they're gonna pull up your information and they're gonna send you an email or make a phone call, but sometimes that information is not accurate, it is outdated. So if you see that, please send an email so we can help you get it corrected so that you can, we can always keep you in the loop and up to date with information. Also, as Mr. Metcalf was talking a lot about Canvas, when you click on the link for Canvas, it is going to help you, it's going to take you to a tutorial that will show you how to create a pairing code. You, you need to generate a pairing code in order to connect to your Scholar's Canvas account. And then also you're going to see a link here for parent training. If you are not tech savvy and you're going to need a little bit of help to understand what you're looking at when you do get into Canvas, that little click, that little link there will allow you to have a, um, a creative tutorial. It's a, a small class, so to say, that will walk you through the basics of Canvas and how to work it. And also, again, as Mr. Metcalf was saying, when your scholars go into Canvas, they're going to get a message from their teacher that could look something like the following, telling them to go to meet.google.com and it will give them a class code. The reason why we use class codes is because only Cheltenham accounts can use those codes to log in. And it also allows us to go and track if, if, a, if a scholar got in when they weren't supposed to, we'll be able to see that they logged in to this Google session because it's tracking their Cheltenham account. If a teacher sent a link like we send Zoom links, then anybody that has that link would be able to join the class. This adds a little level of security so that we can make sure that our learning environments are secure and safe for our scholars. Chromebooks, especially during this digital learning time, I wanted to make sure you had access and information for Chromebooks. So the word Chromebook on this page will take you to the technology site um, all about Chromebooks. The Chromebook loaners link is if you do not have a Chromebook and you need one, that would allow you to put in a request form and then somebody from the tech office will get back to you. Same thing with the Chromebook repairs. If your Chromebook is damaged and you need a repair, you need some support with it in that, term, in that sense, you'll click on that link to get it repaired and somebody will reach out to you and try to schedule a meeting. Last but not least, everybody can use a little bit of help to know how I can use my technology a little bit better. And so I included this link to the um, Office of Innovation that has amazing tutorials on everything you need to know about technology to enhance the learning environment, to enhance the, the outcome that our scholars can produce. All right, so you can go to that link even for yourself to learn some things. It, it's a really great website. And, oh, sorry about that. At this time, we are at the end of our presentation. And so I now want to tell you the most important part, which of Back to School Night is not listening to this webinar. Back to School Night is all about you getting to put a, a face with a name in your scholars class. And because we are in this virtual sense, we are changing things up a bit. And I am giving you this website cheltenham.org slash chsbtsn, back to school night. Or 
you can go to the Cheltenham High School webpage, click Academics, and then when that page comes up, you click the link for Back to School Night 2020-2021, and it's going to take you to a page that has all of your all of our teachers by department, and then you can go by through your entire scholar schedule, click on what department it is, and then you'll click on the teacher, and you'll see which class they teach. And you can click on their video, and you'll be able to see a video welcoming you and introducing you and explaining the class that your scholar is going to be taking. So I really do hope that you found tonight to be helpful and that you, you know, you enjoy these videos and that, you know, I, I apologize that we're in this virtual setting, but it is the best environment in to keep everybody safe and, and to maintain everything that we have done. So thank you so much for all that you guys do as parents and, and, and families. Without you, we would really be struggling because you're the ones that are bringing us these kids every day that, that, and, and you're, you're, you're putting your faith in us to do what's right for them. Thank you.